Okay, here goes full build. I'll be stopping the video as we go along and going back a bit. So this is where we started. I broke ground on 19 September. Uh, just your normal floor with a, some sort of vinyl covering. I took it apart and as you can see uh, I had a good foundation there and the real uh, solid foundation is just under those two by fours there so the black bit and what I wanted to do is obviously go down far enough so that uh, I hit the real uh, concrete which is underneath there and that happened at 22 centimeters that's 8 inches and a bit and nothing too fancy here I just pulled out everything and uh, also the black bits that you can see there um, it's something that they had their bitumen or something like that asphalt that they had already uh, built there before me so I went ahead and got a bunch of uh, stones to fill in the uh, greater part of everything and then the rest of it I filled with Leka concrete. Leka concrete obviously makes it uh, better for heat insulation and this is when I was uh, done with it and just letting it dry for a while. Uh, then I went ahead and put uh, extra isolation on top of it all two strips of bitumen and then I put the between those two strips uh, just uh, put the same sort of stuff on there uh, runny bitumen and that way I had everything isolated from the foundation or insulated then I went ahead and built the wall which is supposed to be then in between any burning materials and also I wanted a little extra something for the looks so I put the bricks around there into that kind of formation as you can see there. Here this is just internal stuff for me, P the PRT uh, bricks, i.e. fired bricks with holes. They're the size 257 by 123 by 57, that's millimeters. And then the white bricks are 290, 123, 123. And what I did for the build is that I decided to go for the riser and take the riser out of the Shida Rondo Plus flu. Uh, you can Google uh, Rondo Plus and you can find out how Shida has built that. But given the fact that uh, this ceramic uh, flu uh, is tough like crazy I figured that it would hold out for my my um, riser and uh, I opened up the area for the port by just cutting an opening into it and also if you look um, here you can see that actually this Rondo Plus is formed in sections of uh, a foot or so and you just stack them on top of one another and the starting bit is that little round bit all the way down and uh, also there I opened up uh, that little slit and you'll see how that all fits to nicely together in just a bit And here we can see the port. So I took vermiculite board, uh, thickness one inch or 25 millimeters. And 
I'm using two of them, uh, one behind the other. Uh, and those two put together make two inches or 50 millimeters. And that's what the port size is supposed to be in a 180 millimeter flue. So the riser is 180 and the flue is 180. And those are the two main components which have to jive uh, together. Furthermore, I use this vermiculite board actually in the floor, i.e. just under the firebox as a uh, heat insulation also. And that you can see in this next image here. So I'm putting together the bits and pieces there to figure out how everything will fit. But you can already see how it's going to be built. So the firebox is those yellow bricks. Those are fire bricks. Then we have the P-channel, i.e. the channel for the secondary air, which is the metal. And at the end of that, there is the little uh, vertical part in it. And that's important in the sense that the vertical part there allows for the mixing of the gases. And here we don't see the port in place yet, but everything else is there. And moving along, here you can see to the right the two vermiculite boards. They form the board. And here you have to keep in mind that they need to be sharp, the port edges when they go into the riser, i.e. not rounded. This is very important to keep in mind when you make them. So never ever make them rounded off. Uh, you have to create uh, a solid foundation for the gases to mix. And for that you need turbulence. And that turbulence is created by those sharp edges. So please keep that in mind. And then here you can see how I numbered all of the bits and pieces. And to the left you can see how number 18 and number 17 will go into the middle in the back. And then the other numbers there are just my bricks so that I get them in some kind of orderly fashion in there. And here you can see how all of those vermiculite boards are cut into correct sizing so that I can start actually building on top of those. And here the uh, foundation for the firebox is already there. You can also see how the port is now assembled and in its correct position uh, forming uh, the back of the firebox. Also if you look at the secondary air channel it's sticking out hugely <laughs> I mean really far and this is uh, just so that I don't make it too short so I made it long enough to reach out beyond the firebox and beyond where I'm going to have my uh, my um, uh, door for the firebox and clay slip for core binding. Yeah, here you can see how the secondary air is now cut into correct length. And you can also see that I have vermiculite board as the ceiling of the firebox. Here there is only one uh, layer of vermiculite, uh, but later on I still add a secondary layer. But I didn't add it at this point, only later on. Actually going back here you can also clearly see when the secondary air uh, port is out uh, you can see that there is an opening in between those 
bottom bricks in the firebox. So it's easy to slide it in and slide it out. And here, um, going a bit back, we have access for the chimney sweep there. That's where the right hand side access is going to be and the same on the left hand side. Uh, not showing quite yet. And there we can see how the riser is going to start in the back. Now ceramic wool is used for fitting the metal parts as well as insulating the riser. So it's very important to keep the riser as hot as possible. So later on you will see how I used ceramic wool uh, for insulating the riser. And here you can see how the metal parts uh, are stuffed uh, with the uh, ceramic wool. And that of course makes everything tidy and also uh, sort of airproof uh, so that air and gases flow in the right places in the right direction. And here to the left you can see in the bottom how there is one bit for the chimney sweep, the access, and to the right the other access. And also to the left of the uh, box you can see that there is one brick standing up. This is the place where the chimney will start. So I'm making sure that the entrance into the chimney is big enough because it has to be the size of one brick all the way up and down there uh, I'm making sure that uh, by placing one of those bricks that way um, I'm making sure that the entry point is large enough. It could be further down, no problem with that but I did want to make sure that the airflow around that brick is happening well enough and therefore I placed it that way. And now you can already see how the chimney is starting to form. So it's the size of a full brick there. And to the back you can see how the cer ceramic wool is now being used as insulation around the flue, uh, sorry, the riser. and a good look into the chimney. Um, in the bottom part of this picture you can see that there are two openings into the chimney. So the full size of the chimney is one brick i.e. 0.032 square meters. And the access port to the right and the access port to the left. And there you can see the bricks upright there. All of that crud obviously comes out, but I haven't cleaned it out by this yet. Okay, here's an important bit. The metals here used to bridge the opening and to fasten the door later on. So keep in mind these metals here. Um, they're obviously keeping those two bricks that go above the door like a vault, but they're also somewhere to fasten the door later on. So very important bit there. And here you can see just how things are coming along. And importantly you can see how the uh, ceramic wool has now been fastened quite tightly around the riser. And the riser is already two bits long there. And looking down the riser, and this is how things are moving along. Uh, I wanted to make it this shape, i.e. looking sort of a bit rounded in the front and you can remember the bottom there how I made those white bricks go around like that so this was the whole plan to make it 
not so square and a bit more easier for, for the eye. To the right there you see an opening. Um, I was thinking that I would be able to have air flow through there but uh, I ended up not being able to do that so those openings there are useless. Uh, sorry the picture is out of focus but maybe you can see that there is a metal mesh that I'm using here. And the bell remains totally open inside and this is for the air to move and stratify inside. So the coldest air is down and the hottest air is upwards. Okay, the ledge is starting to form here. I just wanted that as a detail. It doesn't have any function per se, but it looks nice. And here you can see some measurements. So I won't go through these measurements, but you can see that that um, it's 820 millimeters. That's 0.82 meters uh, on the sides. And also, importantly, at 17 layers, the depth of the bell is 1 meter 18 centimeters. Again, doing the same measuring here, 0.9 meters. And if you're looking at where I'm taking the measurement from, that's fr from on top of the white brick, the topmost white brick. So given that my pieces are one meter long, I need to be a good 90, uh, sorry, a, a good 10 centimeters below this level when I'm ready. So here is 1.245 meters and that was the measurement I wanted to be. So the last white brick I need to be sort of by that position. A little above is okay but not far. Okay here I'm actually starting to close the bell uh, in order to have a clearance for my baffle. And what I did here is that I put those metals uh, to bridge it and you can see that uh, I've actually cut some openings into those bricks there to the left. And that's how the braces run across. And moving along here, there's already mortar there and things are settled already to continue with the build. And by this time, uh, it's not easy to see, but, but the um, firebox is now covered with two levels or two layers of vermiculite. And also we can see that the, the, the riser is covered with the um, uh, wool there. Now here you can see that my bricks aren't totally straight so a professional bricklayer would not probably accept it but there is an opening for the baffle right there. And here I'm finding the proper fit in order to have the covering of the bell. Uh, what's missing in this picture is the cover of the ceramic wool. So I'm going to stretch the ceramic wool straight across the opening there, which will be under the fire bricks and under those metal braces. And given the fact that the uh, ceramic wool can stand the heat from the riser, uh, there won't be any problems for me to have it there. So the metal won't ever get too hot. Um, and the weight of those yellow bricks will keep 
the ceramic wool stretch and the ceramic wool is just the right size at 60 centimeters to stretch over those uh, bricks the, uh, from red brick to red brick here I put a K-type uh, temperature sensor in the flue just above the baffle I haven't connected it yet so I don't have any indication of what those temperatures are but uh, at some point in the future I will connect it and here is a picture from the whole bit from the top you can see that the baffle is now ready there and also the solid red bricks are there in order for me to actually then cover everything and you'll see that very soon there you can see the measurement 565 i.e. just shy of 60 centimeters which is the width of the ceramic wool and here we can see that we're just short of the 30 centimeters that is the proper minimum height minimum clearance above the riser but I couldn't make it so we have to do with 28 and here just to say uh, that at 23 levels of bricks we're at 1.6 meters I'm closing the bell with the ceramic wool here you can see how the wool is there and it's stretched across the opening and the weight of the bricks is keeping the wool in place and here we go concrete and mortar mix I ran out of mortar and concrete so I mixed the two together and also what's not visible here is that the little openings that you can see here uh, still unfilled with wool I just put uh, ceramic wool all around here so as the to make sure that the, the, the concrete will not run down the sides uh, and here I covered it so as to keep it time to to um, dry properly and not too fast okay here the baffle is just out of place here and here you can see it installed now here uh, I thought that I would be using those fire bricks the yellow ones but actually what I did was that I, I made a form and, and poured that form full of, of concrete and this is the starting pit uh, bit for the prefab chimney So here I'm forming the seeding for it and as luck would have it, it cracked but it'll have to do. Just place some ceramic wool again around here, not visible yet. But I took a 250 by 400 which is the area for the seeding, opened up a slot in the center so as to allow for the clearance of, of the gases into the flue like here and then I placed ceramic wool all around and filled it with concrete as can be seen there and here we have it already there's also as you can see all the way to the top of the image there's actually a second baffle which is part of the chimney so I have two baffles here and here is the opening for the secondary air what I did was I just uh, took my angle grinder and took away a bit of the door or the um, place around the door and this is getting close to being ready 
I put lime mortar rendering around it and you can also see the temperature sensor coming through the lime mortar. All plastered and all ready. So here we go. We have a trial run. The door isn't in place yet, but I started running small fires daily, making them uh, larger and larger every day. So started off with a couple of twigs and, and moved on along. And evidently, <laughs> you know, things are doing pretty well because the smoke is actually coming out the chimney. So I was totally exhilarated at this time. Here is uh, important. So I was talking about the little metal bridge over the door. And what I did was I, I made two holes and put um, those uh, screws into those holes. And these are wrong side around because I was just testing that the screws will go into those holes. I turned them around. And looking upwards, you can see the metal there. And uh, here you can see how the door is uh, in position. And nicely burning inside. Now, mind you, um, this is a false picture in the sense that I found out that those holes in the door are too small. Uh, so I've been burning with the door cracked. In other words, those six holes there are not enough primary air for the burn. And I'm still pondering whether or not to actually grind those three slits into larger ones. I make two big ones, on uh, one on either side, or should I just swap the whole door? So I don't know yet, but th that is something that I will have to fig figure out. So that's the one big mistake that I made in this build. Primary air, too little. And you can actually see it inside because you can see the smoke there. Uh, that's a clue that there isn't enough primary air. But evidently it is working pretty okay. You know, wood turns into ashes. So yeah, I'm happy. And that's the end.